As you pursue that experiment, you will very naturally find that you can't help naming sounds, identifying them, that you will go on thinking, that is to say, talking to yourself inside your head automatically. But it's important that you don't try to repress those thoughts by forcing them out of your mind, because that will have precisely the same effect as if you were trying to smooth rough water with a flat iron. You're just going to disturb it all the more. What you do is this. As you hear sounds coming up in your head, thoughts, you simply listen to them as part of the general noise going on, just as you would be listening to the sound of my voice, or just as you would be listening to cars going by, or to birds chattering outside the window. So look at your own thoughts as just noises. And soon you will find that the so-called outside world and the so-called inside world come together. They are a happening. Your thoughts are a happening just like the sounds going on outside. And everything is simply a happening and all you're doing is watching it. Now in this process, another thing that is happening that is very important is that you're breathing. And as you start meditation, you allow your breath to run just as it wills. In other words, don't do at first any breathing exercise, but just watch your breath breathing the way it wants to breathe. And to notice a curious thing about this. You say in the ordinary way, I breathe, because you feel that breathing is something that you are doing voluntarily, just in the same way as you might be walking or talking. But you will also notice that when you are not thinking about breathing, your breathing goes on just the same. So the curious thing about breath is that it can be looked at both as a voluntary and an involuntary action. You can feel on the one hand I am doing it and on the other hand it is happening to me. And that is why breathing is a most important part of meditation because it is going to show you as you become aware of your breath that the hard and fast division that we make between what we do on the one hand and what happens to us on the other is arbitrary. So that as you watch your breathing, you will become aware that both the voluntary and the involuntary aspects of your experience are all one happening. Now that may at first seem a little scary because you may think, well, am I just the puppet of a happening, the mere passive witness of something that's going on completely beyond my control? Or on the other hand, am I really doing everything that's going along? Well, if I were, I should be God. And that would be very embarrassing because I would be in charge of everything. That would be a terribly responsible position. The truth of the matter, as you will see it, is that both things are true. You can see it that everything is happening to you and on the other hand you're doing everything. For example, it's your eyes that are turning the sun into light. It's the nerve ends in your skin that are turning electric vibrations in the air into heat and temperature. It's your eardrums that are turning vibrations in the air into sound and in that way you are creating the world. But when we are not talking about it, when we are not philosophizing about it, then there is just this happening, this... Uh, and we won't give it a name. 
And now then, when you breathe for a while, just letting it happen, and not forcing it in any way, you will discover a curious thing that without making any effort you can breathe more and more deeply. In other words, supposing you simply are breathing out, and breathing out is important because it's the breath of relaxation, as when we say, and heave a sigh of relief. So when you are breathing out, you get the sensation that your breath is falling out. Dropping, dropping, dropping out with the same sort of feeling you have as if you were settling down into an extremely comfortable bed. And you just get as heavy as possible and let yourself go. And you let your breath go out in just that way. And when it's thoroughly, comfortably out and it feels like coming back again, you don't pull it back in, you let it fall back in. Letting your lungs expand, expand, expand until they feel very comfortably full and you wait a moment and let it stay there and then once again you let it fall out. And so in this way you will discover that your breath gets quite naturally easier and easier and slower and slower and more and more powerful. So that with these various aids, listening to sound, listening to your own interior feelings and thoughts, just as if they were something going on, not something you are doing, but just happenings, and watching your breath as a happening that is neither voluntary nor involuntary. You are simply aware of these basic sensations. Then you begin to be in the state of meditation. But don't hurry anything. Don't worry about the future. Don't worry about what progress you're making. Just be entirely content to be aware of what is. Don't be terribly selective, particular, say, I should think of this and not of that. Just watch whatever is happening. Now then, to make this somewhat easier, to have the mind free from discursive verbal thinking, sound or chanted sound is extremely useful. If you, for example, simply listen to the gong, and let that sound be the whole of your experience. It's quite simple, it requires no effort. And then along with that, especially if you don't have a gong, we can use what are called in the Sanskrit language, mantra. Mantra are chanted sounds which are used not so much for their meaning as for the simple tone. And they go along with that easy kind of slow breath. Uh, one of the basic mantras is, of course, the sound om. That sound is used because if you spell it out, A-U-M, it runs from the back of your throat to your lips and therefore it contains the whole range of the voice. And for that reason it represents the total energy of the universe. This word is called the pranava, the name for the ultimate reality for the which than which there is no witcher. And so in this way then, if you chant it, oh.
and it's varied like this. And you can keep that up for quite a long time and eventually you will find as you go on chanting that the words of the chant will simply have become pure sound. And you won't be thinking about it. You won't have any images about the sound going on in your mind. You will simply become completely absorbed in sound and therefore you will find yourself living in an eternal now in which there is no past and there is no future and there is no thing called difference between what you are as knower and what you are as the known between yourself and the world of nature outside you. It all becomes one doing, one happening. Now, in addition to those slow-moving chants, uh, you may find it, according to your temperament, easier to do a fast-moving one. These have a sort of uh, rhythm to them that is absorbing. Say, uh, a chant that many of you have heard that goes... Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And it doesn't matter what it means. Actually, Krishna and Rama are the names of Hindu divinities. But that's not the point. The point is just to get with that thing that is running, running, running. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, and so on. And if you're a Christian or a Jew and you feel more inclined to use a meditation word that is more congenial to you, you can use a... Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Or if you're a Mohammedan, you can use the, the Allah, the name of God. They have a way of doing it, you know, which gets very exciting. Because, Allah, 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 Allah. And it gets faster and faster. You can keep that up for 40 minutes. And you'll be out of your mind. But you see, to go out of your mind at least once a day is tremendously important because by going out of your mind you come to your senses. And if you stay in your mind all the time, you are over-rational. In other words, you're like a very rigid bridge which because it has got no give, no craziness in it, is going to be blown down in the first hurricane. 